Hello and welcome to the Ben Like Bamboo Resilience Show. I believe that flexibility builds resilience and when we can bend, we can be more adaptable and we can master change. This is the best environment we can give ourselves to heal and how we can set ourselves up to achieve more in our lives. Resilience is the key ingredient when transforming our mind, our body and our lives and how we show up when faced with adversity will dictate how effectively we will deal with change. This is why I wanted to introduce special guests on the show who have been on their own journey of their highs and lows that come with success. I hope you feel inspired as we dive deep into golden nuggets and all the lessons that they have learned along the way so you can realize that you too can overcome anything. So I'm really excited to have you on the show, Colleen. Welcome, Colleen Callender. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Nice to see you. You too. So Colleen is the founder of Mentor Me Women and former Sports Girls CEO. Uh, Geelong born and raised, Colleen was brought up in a hardworking business focused family, having her first taste of retail at the age of 16. Unbeknownst to her at the time, this summer job would be the start of a retail career spanning over 30 years. So inspiring. Colleen has a wealth of knowledge and a proven track, track record in building brands, creating a winning culture, building an environment that allows people to be inspired and empowered, and is now sharing not only the past 13 years of experience as a CEO, but the past 30 years of her retail career. Colleen is an inspiration to women of all generations and wants to encourage women globally to have the confidence to believe in themselves, their ability, sharing their voice and finding their superpower within. This is so cool. Colleen wants to inspire and empower women to lead in their own lives, whether that be in boardrooms, organizations, communities, or even in their very own home. She wants women to believe in the power within and that it is possible to become the leader they always wanted to be in business and in life and together create a new era of leadership and one that puts people at the heart of everything that they do at everything that we do. So Colleen has just launched her Mentor Me program, Mentor Me Women, which is aimed at making mentoring accessible and affordable for all women. So, wow, I'm so Thank excited to have you. That was very long and it makes me feel <laughs> very old every time someone says 30 years in retail, but you know, it is what it is. We have just done so much. So I couldn't like, I actually, I actually made your bio shorter than, than I originally was going to, because you've just achieved so much and I want everyone to know all everything that you've done. So, yeah. so let's start with, um, you know, well, how does it actually feel like you used to be the CEO of Sports Girl um, and coming out of that corporate life into what you're doing now, like how does that feel? It's actually really, really wonderful. I mean, 20 years anywhere today is, is a very long time to be in one organisation and um, I am so proud of what I achieved when I was there and 13 of those years, as you know, I was CEO across Suzanne for a period of time and Sports Girl. Um, and, you know, I would have preferred this year to look a little bit different in terms of being able to do some travel, uh, which was the plan, um, and spend some time with my family, which has been in abundance, yes. um, which has also been lovely. Um, but it's actually really, really nice to do things that I'm really, really passionate about. And I'm passionate about women in leadership. I'm passionate about women leading in their own lives. And I'm really about inspiring and empowering them to do that. So um, I've, I've really, I was saying earlier, you know, I've been on this sort of mentor me journey um, only for the last eight weeks. And it's just been so incredible, the, the amount of women that I've been able to sort of mentor and encourage um, and in that short time. And it really was driven out of COVID. Um, I probably would never have even done this. So when we talk about COVID being a very challenging time, for many people, and it is, I think it's also brought a lot of new thinking and reinvigoration and, you know, reimagining what we actually are possible, um, you know, what is possible. So um, I've actually loved it. And I, I'm sort of 
planning on taking a few more months off yet. You know, maybe the rest of the year, I'm hoping. And yeah. who knows Who knows what that could bring. Who knows so, where it will lead. So, like, talk me through how, how did it come to you? Were you just having a glass of wine with the girls or were you just like, how did yeah, it come to you? Oh, I love, I love, you know, speaking with women and I love, um, you know, unlocking their stories and unpacking their stories. And yeah. I, I've always loved talking to my team uh, in my business. So, um, and inspiring them to, to believe that they can, you know, be and do whatever they want to. And so yeah. it was really, I was talking to Tamil, who, who was my EA, and, um, and we kind of just went, oh, we both sort of had this idea at the same time. And, uh, and so it was like, then we went into the next stage of lockdown and I called her and I said, now, we're going to do this now, let's go. And awesome. so we weren't kind of ready, but it, it's just been fabulous. So, um, yeah, what a gift. Uh, really thrilled, really thrilled. Yeah, you'd obviously turned um, uh, lemons into lemonade, which is why you're so good at what you do. So what does resilience mean to you? Uh, yeah, it's interesting. So I, I really think resilience is the ability to adapt and bounce back when things don't go your way and you know we all have many of many of those challenges you know whether it be i didn't get that job i applied for whether it be a failed relationship um, whether it be a pitch didn't go so well um, you know resilience is about taking those lessons and moving forward and really digging deep and finding the strength to do that to to take those lessons and learnings and apply them in your life going forward um, you know, I say we often want to take the easier road. You know, we often want to shy away from from facing those things, whether they be challenges or obstacles or or, or roadblocks in our life. And you know, resilience is really about um, finding the strength to to look that in the eye and and take that on head on. Um, yeah. So you know, I think that I, I think resilience also for me it's interesting. I think about resilience and confidence as a muscle, and you know, I talk about uh, that with my with my sort of when I'm doing my mentor me and you know the more we use muscles the stronger they get and you know there are I'm sure people that have um, you know sort of some people have you know more resilience than others just by nature maybe yeah. what they've been through in their life or um, experience they've had um, but you know for me I really do believe that um, resilience um, isn't a personality trait yeah. um, Resilience is something that we can learn and we can develop and we can build on throughout our lives. And, um, you know, when we do that um, and how we do that is really, um, you know, there's sort of five key things that I think about when I think about that. And one is, um, you know, we, we hold ourselves accountable and we, we, we don't blame, but we take responsibility. That yeah. builds resilience. I totally um, agree. Being self-aware and self-care helps us build resilience, particularly as females, because we're often givers and we're not takers. So really making sure that we're self-aware and building that self-care into our life helps us build resilience. Um, embracing change helps us build resilience. You know, no, I don't know anyone or many people who love change. You know, most yeah. people don't. And, you know, the thing is that we can't control the uncontrollables. We can only control what's in our control. Yes. So, to, to be resilient and to build resilience, we really need to be able to embrace change. Absolutely. And, and, and the other big one, I think, is, you know, that we, to build resilience, we can't dwell on what's happened. You know, we can't, we can't um, change the past. You know, we can't change COVID-19. That's here. Um, you know, we can't change the past. We can't predict what Daniel Andrews is going to say on Sunday. We can't predict the future. But what we can do is control the decisions we make today the actions we make today, the thoughts we have today. And yes. for me, that's really powerful in building resilience. That's really great advice, Colleen. And I totally agree. And I think that when we are stressed, we tend to reflect, we overanalyze the past or we're stuck in the future mm -hmm. and, and we're not in the present moment, which is our most creative state. And then it's exactly what you just touched on is self-care is the key ingredient there, isn't it? To, to be able to, um, to look after ourselves when we're calmer and we're healthier we're able to be more creative and innovative in our problem solving skills which means we can yeah see a path forward mm, absolutely absolutely couldn't agree more oh, i love it so would you mind sharing something that you've had to overcome in your life anything at all that you're mm. open to yeah. talk about 
Yeah, you know, I, I think, um, you know, people often look at our lives, you know, and we look at other people's lives and think, wow, how perfect and, well, they've got that plan sorted and everything just must go right for them. And that just couldn't be further from the truth for anyone. So for yeah. people looking at other people's lives, when we think that, that is just not true. We yeah. all, you know, we all have challenges and obstacles. And, Absolutely. Um, and, you know, we all face failures and setbacks. And, and, you know, again, it's the way we choose to react to those situations, the decisions we make and the choices we make when that happens. And, you know, I've had two very big moments in my life and one I've shared with, with you know, different podcasts and one I haven't, which I'm going to share both of them with you today. But Very exciting. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, and, and what happened in that moment and in that time and the choices I made yeah. um, chose the path I went down and they could have been two very different paths. So in um, 2002, I went through a divorce, which, you know, some people may or may a lot may not know. And that was a super, super challenging time for me. And I was 31 years of age. So I was really young. Um, I had two young boys, a three and a half and a five year old. Um, and that was probably one of the lowest points in my life. And, and I'm going to share a bit of that. And there was one particular moment that was the lowest point. And um, you know, divorces are extremely challenging um, for anyone uh, and um, yeah. you know, they're challenging emotionally. They're often challenging financially. Sometimes they're challenging for people physically as well. Yeah. And mine were very emotional and, and financially driven. Um, and I was so lucky at the time, Amanda, because I have this incredible family and I talk a lot about my family, um, being my mum and dad and my brother and sister. And um, at the time through that divorce, I sold my family home. Um, you know, I had huge lawyer's bills to pay um, yeah. and my parents were there. You know, my, my family has always, you know, given unconditional love. They were there and they helped me get back on my feet and they helped me you know, buy a house. I bought a house, in, a townhouse in Geelong because I wanted a, a stable place for my boys. Yeah. Um, and I borrowed some money off them to, um, to furnish my home because all I took with me was two beds for my boys. And... Um, and until I could pay that money back, I didn't sleep. You know, that was me because I'm a super proud person and I've always wanted my parents to be proud of me. And for me, this was a moment that I thought maybe they weren't proud of me and I couldn't have been more wrong. Um, yeah. so I re and I remember this one particular moment and it was a Saturday morning and it was in February and I remember it like yesterday. And, and as I said, the boys were three and a half and five and we were driving down the freeway and there was a McDonald's. And Jake's, my eldest son, said, Mama, can we have McDonald's? And I said to him at the time, oh, no, Jake, you know, we won't have McDonald's. You know, that's not good for you, that kind of food. And it was a bit of a treat food, right? You know, it wasn't something we had all the time. Yeah. And the truth of the matter was that I actually didn't have any money to buy McDonald's. That was the truth of the matter. And the reason I knew that was because that morning I'd stopped with the boys in the car to the ATM. We didn't have online banking back then, or at least I didn't. Um, and as I pulled that piece of paper out of the bank, I had $9.61 in my bank account. Oh, you even and remember I, to the cent. I oh remember gosh. that number to the cent. And for me, I went, you know, when, when that, that particular moment when, when I had to say no to the boys, I then went home and I sat and I cried and I cried and I cried. And I just kept saying to myself, you've failed. And then in this moment, I went from this story I was telling myself about being a failure to this story I told myself about I'm a survivor. Mm. And they're two very different stories we can tell ourselves. And the, the failure one was you've lost your house and you've lost your marriage and your boys are never going to forgive you and your family thinks you're a loser. And well, yeah. you, all of this story I was telling myself and that yeah. was the failure story. And then I went from that story to saying you're a survivor, you've got through this and you're strong and your boys love you and you've got a roof over their head and your family gives you unconditional love and... I changed the story and, um, and I dug deep and I don't know where it came from because it was a really hard story, but I dug deep and found this resilience that I didn't even know I had, but it was just this huge lesson in the story we tell ourselves can create the path forward. And by changing that story from failure to survival gave me a whole different story. Wow. So, you know, that was a, that was a really tough point in time. And then in 2000 and what was it? 2007, I think 2007, I had burnout, which, um, you know, is a, it's a very common thing for, for working women, for mums, for anyone. CEOs. Really. <laughs> CEOs, you know, uh, and, you know, I got up and just didn't want to do, 
didn't want to do what I was doing the next yeah. week was because I didn't love lost it. Lost the joy. I just lost the passion. I just yeah. I, I lost the, you know, I, I described myself at that time, you know, I'd been on this, uh, I was like a, a, um, a Formula One race car, you know, mm. and I had just been going and going and going and going and going and I hadn't stopped. I hadn't put petrol in my car. I hadn't changed yeah. the tyres. I hadn't pulled into the pits. I hadn't done yeah. any of that and I literally just hit a wall. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, and I, was, I went in to resign and thank goodness I got talked out of that uh, and instead I took four months off and four months to be with my family, four months to recuperate. Four replenish. Months to replenish. What did you do to replenish? Um, I, we actually went down to Sorrento. I took some time out and went down there because that's my happy place in this world, in this entire world, actually. Um, and I just learned self-care and I, had, I, hadn't, I didn't know what self-care looked like. I hadn't yeah. actually applied self-care to myself because, again, my whole world had been around working, providing yeah. for my two boys and, and you know, making them proud of me. So I didn't factor in my own health. So burnout was another you know, big part of, of my change in life, I suppose. It's interesting, those two different examples you gave. One um, explains how you had no choice. You sort of, you were pushed into making that change because of the burnout and almost were, you know, were led to, you know, you might've had a bit of help there. But the first example was very much, it's something came over you and this resilience came on that you didn't even know existed. And sometimes that happens. We don't realise what we're made of and it rises up like energy out from nowhere and it exists and it's there for you holding you yeah and that is a perfect absolutely perfect description of what happened i was sitting there in this moment crying and all of a sudden i, I as i said i turned around from being a failure to be a survivor and this resilience just like you said just came up i don't know where it came Surprises from up. But it's there. you know we do have it when we dig deep we do have it absolutely and the reason i remember that is because my pivotal moment where i was rock bottom and i was paralyzed I just felt this energy come up and, and, and come over me from nowhere. I was like, who is this? What's coming over me? And, and I changed the story yeah. and I went, no, I will walk again. And then that created a whole different path. So it's yeah. so interesting hearing other people's stories and how it's very similar, how something just comes over you like a wave that was always there and it's accessed when we hit rock bottom. Yes. Yeah. No? Yeah. Um, oh, that's beautiful. So you've, yeah, you've shared your, some low points there and even the turning points. So I want to ask you now, so how is your life better having gone through those really difficult times? I think, um, I think the number one thing, and I sort of touched on a little bit, is this, um, it was the best lesson in self-preservation ever, um, particularly the burnout part, um, because for me, um, you know, I was, I was like this crazy woman in a really good way. You know, this, I just had this, you know, nonstop overachiever, um, you know, never, never stop, say yes to everything. No wasn't part of my vocabulary. And so the burnout for me was the best lesson in self-care ever. That was number one. The other thing I had to do was um, think about life in balance. Yeah. And I had for so long thought about work-life balance. And they were the two parts of my life, work and life. And that was it. And for me, I changed again, changed the story I was telling myself. So it was, it moved from work-life balance to life in balance. And I wanted that to be a really beautiful circle that had all of the parts of my life in there that I wanted. And, you know, that was family and that was friends and that was self-care and that was um, work and that was, you know, all of the other things that we yeah, put in there. Yeah, we forget, and don't we? We forget. We, we, on... we just, you know, we, we, we forget. And so for me, that whole life in balance, I, I taught myself to have an 80-20 life in balance. And, and that's what works for me. It doesn't necessarily have to work for everyone, but 80% of my life had to be in balance. Yeah. For my own health and well-being. Right. And the 20% could be chaos. And I actually quite like that chaos as well, because that brings excitement and new yeah. ideas and innovation. But at points in time throughout my, and, and you learn to um, understand those triggers and those points where the scales start to tip because you start to feel depleted and things don't feel right. And so if throughout, throughout my life, even still to this day, if those scales get out of balance, I know straight away that I have to delete something, add something, change something. I know those triggers. So, um, yeah. you know, that, that would be really key. And the third thing I would say is, boundaries yeah as i said I, I wouldn't have any boundaries because i knew no boundaries um because i was just i can do and achieve anything and i can keep going until i literally fall over 
um, and we do fall over. Um, and so setting boundaries, you know, what, when I'm at work, I'm at work. When I was at home with my family, I was at home with my family. You know, I didn't take any personal calls at work. I didn't, you know, really just making sure you have those boundaries around you and that yeah. that's what I've done. Um, and yeah, and that they're, they're probably some of the big lessons that have served <coughs> yeah. really well and, and probably helped me to survive because if I kept going at the pace I was going, I don't know if I'd be hitting 50 next year. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not sure I've made it this far. So, uh, you know, some really, really key lessons and some big changes I had to make in my life. Yeah, enormous, mm-hmm. um, enormous. So, what's the biggest thing? The biggest thing you've learned? Mm. I think the biggest thing would be um, change, change your story, change your life. Yeah, um, you know, I think so that's one of the big things. And you know, we've sort of touched on this a little bit. Is we we often have these stories we're telling ourselves, and they're just not true. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you change the story, you can change your life because then your decisions and your actions, your thought process is very different. Absolutely um, agree. You've nailed it. And I think changing the story can start with that inner narrative of what you're saying to yourself or what you're hearing yourself convince yourself of. When do we get taught, when are we ever taught to regularly check in with our stories? I mean, could this be a curriculum at school, please? Like, can you imagine yeah, oh, do you know, Amanda, I agree. And I, even on the Mentor Me program that I've been running, one of the things I love is that every single woman I've been mentoring or group has a different story. And is it a different part in their life and at a different you know, phase on their, in their journey? But there is one thing that I actually didn't realise that is so common and, in fact, is amongst every single, every single one, is that they tell themselves these stories. And yeah. in doing that they lower their confidence and they bring in this self-doubt and this self-negative talk. And if we could teach that at a younger age to have this positive talk and this, you know, um, you know, being able to change that story around, I mean, we would be living in quite a different world today. I totally agree. And the best thing that I've, what, no matter what age group I work with um, to help people to build their resilience and change their stories, the best thing we can do is give our mind and body the best environment to be happy and more positive. And when we're calmer, we can be in a more creative state. We're more open to change. Yes, absolutely. Exactly. And calm, important. What are your um, favourite um, self-care um, things that you do? Oh, I, I really, I mean, my favourite, as I said, my favourite place is Sorrento. So I, you know, I can just get in the car and drive down there and I go into it. It's like I'm a car shifting gear. Yeah, totally. So I go into it totally. I mean, you, you go down to Sorrento too. So That's where know, I met you, yeah. And yes, we met down there. So you know exactly so what I'm talking about. So I can be doing anything down there. I can be sitting by the fire. I can be in the garden. I can be anything that I can be down the beach, yeah. um, you know, they're, that's, they're the kind of things that replenish me. And certainly my family replenishes me, you know, they're, oh, that's they're really the most cool. wonderful things in the world. So, you know, just hanging out with them. Um, yeah. you know, we sat here on Saturday. It was so beautiful, such beautiful weather in Victoria. You know, the kids sat out the back and they were playing, I know. And, you know, singing and, you know, that's what replenishes, replenishes our souls. Have you guys managed the lockdown together and what's your probably biggest tip there? Yeah, look, I, I think um, we've been really, really good. Um, and I think, you know, we, we've all been really, I, I think because we haven't spent so much time together because we've always been working and busy and, you know, I haven't had a house where all my children have been living here for the last five years because, you know, one's been in Canada, Jake was living in Japan last year. So we've actually really, really enjoyed the time and oh. we've, we've tried to do different things like Mace has been cooking, yeah. um, she's taught herself the guitar, she's written a song. So, you know, we play Uno, we, you know, we've just really tried to enjoy the time together, but yeah. also set some boundaries. I got in trouble. Well, I sort of got myself in trouble because last weekend I spent all weekend in the office, um, which is here where I am. And I felt really bad on Sunday night and I said to my son, um, you know, next weekend, I'm going to put some boundaries because that's what I, you know, talk to everyone else about. And at 12 o'clock on Saturday, I'm closing the office door. And can I tell you, by God, that morning, first thing he said to me, mum, you've got to close the office at 12 o'clock today. So oh. it's, it's really nice that they want to be around with you and want to share that time. Yeah, so, yeah oh, I've loved good. it, I've got to say. Mm. That's good. Sometimes we do need, you know, that time to, where we don't feel guilty. That's what it's been for me. It's like, I don't, I'm, I'm very driven and I overdo it sometimes. And this has just been an opportunity to not feel guilty about slowing down. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, 
know, just had to really learn how to self care even more. And yeah, there's so many benefits to it. Yeah. Um, we haven't got enough time and now we have. And then here time, we, here it is. So, and we don't yeah, know what to do with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's been great. Um, no, that's good. Um, so do you have three special three tips that you can share um, that really helps people to transform? Maybe someone's going through something at the moment and they just, maybe they're at their rock bottom. Like what are your three tips? Yeah, I would say number one would be believe in yourself. And yes. I know people can go, oh, that's really easy to say. But I really want to say that. Believe in yourself and believe in the power in you. Yeah. Because we all have this, we all have the power inside and we all have the answers. You know, we, we really do. And um, I really think that when we start to, particularly when we start to believe in ourselves, great things happen and you know that confidence starts to show through and people start to notice that you know so believe in yourself anything is possible that you put your mind to and it's anything. contagious isn't it when someone believes in themselves absolutely and when someone else knows you believe in them oh. that is the biggest gift you can give someone that is say. so true yeah. like yeah. Yeah. Someone, i believe in you it just gives me goosebumps when i even say it you yeah. know it, it, it it makes people believe in themselves so i say that's number one yeah. number two would be i would say trust your gut instinct i have an incredible gut instinct and i think everyone does and often we don't trust them and if i've ever not trusted my gut instinct it's been my decision's been wrong absolutely so really go right in here and say what is my gut telling me and it, yeah. it will very rarely fail you so absolutely. really trust in your gut i think is number two great and then the other one i would say is um surround yourself with your cheer squad um yeah. i think that's super important is surround yourself with people that love you yeah. people that want to see you do well people that want to support you people that know you're going to fall over and they're going to be there to pick you up because there's a lot of people out there that don't do that um and there's a lot of people that want to see other people fail or want to see other people not succeed so surround yourself with those true people that yeah. really believe in you and love you and want to see you succeed and do well yeah. Absolutely. Oh, such good advice, Colleen. And the more that we believe in ourselves, the more we'll notice who those people are that Absolutely. we should hang out yes. with more, just it'll energetically just align. Um, oh my gosh, this is such juicy advice. Thank you so much. I really want you to tell me about your mentoring program and all these, the superpowers that you bring out in women. Yeah, so look, as I said, it's been it's been so fabulous. Um, you know, we're running so the mentor program is either one on one mentoring because yeah. some people don't like to do group things. Yeah. Um, but the mentoring program is for a four week block, and the first session is one on one for an hour, which is really about me getting to know you. Yeah. Um, and we talk about all sorts of things, and you you know the the, the people I'm mentoring can share a little or share a lot, and they generally share a lot because that's the way we actually. Um, you know, really connect and I can really support them in their journey. So that one-on-one's really key. And then the next three sessions are in group sessions and they're generally about six to eight, depending. Um, and, you know, we do things around values and knowing yourself. We talk about their purpose. Um, we talk about leading in your own life. We talk about leadership and what we need to keep doing and start doing and stop doing to be great leaders. We talk about what leadership really means. Um, you know, we talk about boundaries. You know, we have lots and lots of discussion. Um, one of the things I found really interesting is I, when I was writing the program or thinking about it, I wanted to go straight into leadership. I'm going to do leadership and talk to women because that's that's my passion. That's what I have got up and done every day. Uh, you know, in in my working sort of world. Um, and then when I thought about it, it, for me it was no. We need to actually bring it back and. For me, your values and your purpose and knowing yourself is the foundations of a great house. And if we don't get those foundations super solid and really know those things, then there's no point building a house because it's going to be shaky and crack and it's not going agree. To be too durable. Yeah. And so it was really interesting. And I know you love this space as well, but, uh, you know, I, I was really surprised because people, particularly women, haven't spent time on themselves 
doing that, looking at understanding their values so they can make the right decisions or really pulling back the layers to know themselves or really yeah. understanding what gets them out of bed every day and what they're passionate yeah. about. And so that was really, that's been really powerful to, as I said, for all of these women to build these really, really solid foundations before we even go into the leadership space um, or leading in their own lives, whether that be boardrooms, organisations, homes, communities, wherever you want to lead. And yeah. I talk about you don't need a title to be a leader. Just because I've been a CEO, yeah, it doesn't mean that that's the only person that that's can what I love about you. Like, you're, you're so humble, it's just so beautiful to watch. It's you, you, you've really, you've just, you're the most amazing person, and, and and but you're just so approachable and so kind. Thank you, thank you. Um, oh, well, that's that's so wonderful. Thank you so much for coming on today. I really appreciate all your juicy golden nuggets and wisdom. What are your superpowers? Tell me. Um, I would say authenticity uh, would be one of my superpowers. You can have two. Yeah. Um, and um, to inspire. Um, I think that's probably one of my superpowers is that I have the, you know, this sort of ability to inspire women and that's what I love to do. So I'd say they're my two. Yeah. What's oh, yours? I think um, communication yeah. um, and inspiration. I love inspiring people and helping hey. people to remind. Yeah, very similar. Yeah. Reminding people of what they're truly made of and helping them see challenges with new, fresh eyes, that they're there for a reason to build that resilience muscle, to take us on a new path that, you know, often setbacks direct us towards and that it's all meant to be. And to sort of go with the flow, swim downstream rather than upstream, yeah. because on the other side of that awaits a whole new version of ourselves. And yeah. that's how we can rebuild a new mind, body yeah. or life or whatever it is that we're wanting. But getting out of our comfort zone yeah. and being adaptable is the most important thing. And, you know, everything you shared today just explains exactly how, how you did that and can inspire other people how they can too. Oh, thank you so much. It's been so awesome and wonderful to talk to you. And I can't wait till we're out of ISO and maybe see each other again down at Sorrento and have You're a very on. well overdue glass of wine. Absolutely, you <laughs> are on. And I will share in my blog and all the notes um, your wonderful program and thank love you. from me. Thanks thank you so much. Me. Love back. Thank you so much. Bye.